Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to show you some cool, easy tips and tricks on how to install a custom AMD cooler on your AM4 platform. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this is the, the very final of our installations. Well, hopefully it's going to be the final one. This is going to be with a custom cooler. So this is the Vitro V5. This is an absolutely amazing upgrade for pretty much most AM4 processors. If you're looking for an upgrade and you uh, like a little bit of the older RGB bling, this is an excellent option. We did do a full review on this, so you can check it out up here. Links will be provided. And certainly, yes, highly recommended. Five heat pipes, pretty easy installation to be quite honest with you definitely recommended and there's always a deal going on with vitro stuff so yeah do check out this cooler but anyway that's enough of that let's get on with the installation so we've got the motherboard back to kind of the original state so we've got our brackets in place still as it would be as if the motherboard was brand new out of the box so the first thing we're going to want to do is as always get our cross-headed screwdriver undo the four screws and remove the actual plastic clips there we are going to be making use of the stock AM4 backplate, so that is going to stay in place. Again, if you're doing this, depending if you've skipped to this from the chapters, but ideally you want to have some sort of support underneath this backplate just to keep it in place. Ideally, motherboard box, or if you can't, just get a block of wood or a piece of plastic, something of that nature. Potentially even some gaffer tape can hold it, but it's not going to be that strong. So yeah, ideally you want something which is going to give you equal rebound force that you're going to be pushing onto it so yeah sponge things like that no good at all because we do need to put a bit of extra pressure on these clips on this particular cooler so let's take this apart and we'll get on with it so as per usual cross the screwdriver and we'll just undo all of these screws sorry for those of you that are watching this video and you've seen all of the installations so far it is repetitive i do apologize but there are going to be people out there who are going to be asking questions or just go to a specific chapter. So I am going to have to uh, repeat some sections. So put these to one side. We may need those at a later date. So the next thing to do is to get our processor ready, which we've got installed already. If you haven't seen how to install a processor, that is at the beginning chapter. So you can check that out. We are going to have to apply some thermal paste as always. And again, we're going to go with the Arctic MX4 and all we need is between a five to 10 mil strip. Again, a little bit more isn't a bad thing, but too little is actually uh, quite a bad thing. So a little strip there. Just like a little slug. And again, as per usual, we'll get the measure out and see, uh, see how bad I went over. So yeah, that's about uh, a centimeter, so 10 mil. That's absolutely fine. So now we can get the cooler actually ready to install. Now I have cheated a little bit. I've actually put the uh, the brackets on the bottom. Obviously, if you want to see how to do a full installation on this, you can check out the review video of the V5 from Vitro up here. But essentially, this is pretty much as it comes in the box. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take these spring clips off the side and remove the actual cooling fan. The reason behind that is because of where the screws are. So you can see there, you've got screws there, 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 and there. And with the fan in place, literally, we can't get a screwdriver onto them to actually do them up. So minimal installation, this will give us the uh, the greatest ease of access to those screws. So as we did in the last one, what we're going to do is we're going to get these screws lined up with our AM4 backplate. Again, I'm probably going to start off in one corner, drop it down on an angle like that, get one lined up, then maybe look at one on the exact opposite side, and then kind of just gently lower it down towards that screw hole and we should find that they match up. Now, again, as it was with the stock AM4 cooler and a lot of other coolers for that matter, at this point we wanna be looking for the screws to be actually touching the AM4 backplate threads which are popping up from the back. If for some reason at this point, there's a millimeter or two gap between the actual screw threads and the backplate, something is wrong. You need to readjust either your backplate or take a look at the installation of your cooler to make sure that you've done everything as it should do in the instructions. So we're looking for an extremely close tolerance where these screws are literally touching the back plate in this configuration. Again, I cannot stress this enough. If you don't do it properly, 
it's no point getting it all installed and then going into your system and finding out your temperatures are completely off because you haven't installed your cooler correctly. Even if it means reapplying your thermal paste, it's better to kind of take the whole thing off, look at all your mountings, make sure it's all come up through, make sure there's adequate pressure on that back plate. Because if there isn't, again, if we lift it up slightly, it will come away and then there is gonna be a gap between the screw threads and the back plate, which is not what we wanna see. So we're gonna get the camera in closer now so you can see how we're gonna tighten this up. So starting off, we're gonna start in one corner. So I'm gonna choose this corner. Actually, no, I won't. I'll choose this corner here because that's gonna be closest to, for you guys to be able to see it on the camera. So again, our screw thread is basically touching. And if I lift it up slightly, you can see there's a, there's a little gap and it should be pretty much touching. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that a bit better. So that is how it should look with it actually touching the thread. If it looks something like this, then it's not firmly seated. It has to be touching. So make sure it's touching. And when it is, what we can do, as we did with the previous AM4 cooler, we get our screwdriver in there. And you can, if you want to, just do some anti-clockwise motions. So just do that and you'll hear it click. And there's a visible click. That means the threads are lined up. So now you can go clockwise and just do two or three turns just to get the thread started. And you may hear the spring, the tension on the spring actually go in, but that is absolutely fantastic. That is what we wanted to hear. So let's zoom back out. And now what we want to do is because we've done this corner here, we now want to do the exact opposite corner on the other side. So let's spin the board round. And we're looking now at this one here. So as you can see, it's already lifted up a little bit. So what we're going to want to do is to apply a little bit of pressure here and then get the screwdriver in and then just a few screws. And give it a little rock just to make sure and just make sure it's actually in there. So that is fantastic. That is in. I can zoom in a little bit. So as you can see there, the thread is actually started. And if we kind of try and wiggle this bar, the whole thing moves with the back plate. So we know it's actually firmly attached. So now what we want to do is to do exactly the same on the other corners. So at this point you can, if you want to, just go around and do opposing sides. Gain a little bit of pressure. couple of turns just make sure it's gone in that's looking good and then we can do our final one in this back corner which has so far not been in and that is essentially it so that is all four firmly seated so now we can just go around and do equal pressure all the way around so one two three four one two three four I'll do a bit on the other side, one, two, three, four. And then the front one, one, two, three, four. And that one's tightened up fully now. One, two, three, one, two, two, one and a half. And that one just needs a little bit of a turn. So that is it now, that is fully tightened up all the way around. And again, at this point, it's a really good idea you can just check, make sure that your uh, your back plate is completely flush with your motherboard on both sides. Just make sure that is uh, completely in the right place. But I'm pretty happy. This looks good. That feels like a really good installation to me. So now we can uh, go ahead and install the fan. So now we can install the fan. So easiest way of doing this is you can actually just rest the fan pretty much on the screws. And that should give you pretty much the ideal height adjustment as you can see there it's uh, pretty much exactly the right size and get your clips in hand ready to go in and the clips themselves are these horrible spring clips and they just pop through the holes there and there but on the back so on this section here put them through the holes and then a little bit of tension on the side and there we go there's that one in place Ideally, you want to hold the fan in place. 
otherwise it's going to have a tendency to kind of wiggle away. So let's give you a better angle of this. So again, those hooks there and there, in there and there, and then you can use a little bit of uh, tension on the back there and literally just pull it over. Oh, that is in. I was giving it too much tension. So there we go. That is the spring clips on. That's held in place okay, I think. Doesn't need to go back a little bit further. No, I think we're good. That is absolutely fine. You might want to centralize the fan a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't quite sit centrally, so there is a little bit of wiggle room there, so you can move it around to make sure it's in the right place. But essentially, my friends, that is it. We've come to the end of the video. And hopefully by now, after watching some of the chapters, you've actually managed to uh, install your cooler correctly. The removal of this one, again, is exactly the same deal. So take the spring clips off and undo the screws in the various corners. Ideally, if you can, heat up the processor beforehand to uh, give the cooling thermal compound a little bit of uh, increased viscosity. When it's cold, it does become very solid. But yeah, a little bit of heat there. With this one, it's nice and easy, so if it is unable to be warmed up because for some reason then you can just get a hair dryer or some kind of uh, hot air source onto the fin stack there and it'll transfer through if you can aim it towards the bottom ideal uh, yeah that will just make it a little bit easier so the warmer the board is and the processor the easier it is to remove the thermal paste and therefore the cooler from the processor okay so there you go there are some tips and tricks showing you how to easily install the vitro v5 or to be honest with you, pretty much any of the custom type coolers for your AMD AM4 platform. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to drop a like. And if you know anybody else who might appreciate this content, then please feel free to share the video with them. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.